Sixth grade lesson 5.3 is writing fractions and decimals as percents. So we had learned what percents were modeled, and then we learned that uh, how to handle percents um, and by turning them into fractions or into decimals. And now we're going to learn how to change a fraction or decimal into a percent. So the reverse of what we did in lesson 5.2. So one way that we can change percents to, or change a fraction to a percent, um, is if we recall, a percent means out of 100, and we were using that denominator of 100. Well, if I have a fraction, my first thing I would do is I would check to see, can I easily use equivalent fractions and make this denominator 100? If I can, that's kind of an easy way to do it. Sometimes you can, and sometimes it's not as easy. In this case, that's easy because I know my money. I know that 25 cents, four times over, is going to be 100. A quarter, four quarters makes a dollar, right? I know those things. So I know I can make 25 into 100 by multiplying by four because four quarters makes a dollar. Remember to keep a fraction equivalent though, we need to do the same thing to the numerator as we did to the denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by four to force that denominator to be 100 because I know that percent means out of 100. And then three times four for my numerator gives me 12. And we know that 12 out of 100 is 12%. So there it is now changed to a percent. 3 25ths as a percent is 12%. Let's see one more example. I'll look at this fraction and I'll go, hmm, can I make that denominator easily become a 100? Oh yes I can because 10 times 10 is 100. So as soon as I see that and if they want me converting that to a percent, I'm just going to go ahead and use that knowledge. Times 10, remember whatever I do to the denominator I must do to the numerator to keep it equivalent. I'm not changing the number, I'm just finding it's equivalent. 10 times 10 is 100. 3 times 10 is 30, and we know that three, 30 out of 100 is the same thing as saying 30%. So that is one way. If you notice, for changing fraction to percent, if you notice your denominator can easily be turned into 100, do that. That's an easy way to do it. And then I just want to brush off cobwebs from last lesson real quick and then build on it. So last lesson we said we learned how to say what 25% was as a decimal. We knew it was 25 divided by 100, two zeros, two decimal places. And so we would show up the decimal if it wasn't already there. And we would move it two spots to the left because it was being divided by 100. One, two spots. So we would end up with 0.25 as a decimal. So keeping that in mind, if I needed to change a decimal like 0 0.25 into a percent, to get it out of a percent, I divided by 100. So we would do the opposite. Let's multiply by 100. And that's simply going to move my decimal two spots to the right. So I would get 2.25 as a percent is going to be 25 percent. You move two decimals to the right. We're undoing what we did before. So if you have a decimal you, and you want it to be a percent, two spots to the right. If you have a percent that you want to be a decimal, you're dividing by 100, two spots to the left. So when you're dealing with percents and decimals, you're just moving decimal points two spots one way or another, depending on what you're trying to find. P uh, percents to a decimal, we divide, so it's two spots to the left. Uh, percent uh, decimal into a percent we're multiplying two spots to the right okay so during the 2008-2009 season of the national basketball association the nba the phoenix suns won 11 out of 20 of their games the miami heat won about 0 0.524 of their games which team was more successful during the season that is 524 thousandths of their games which team was more successful during the season? In order to compare the season performances of the Suns and the Heat, it is helpful to write the fraction and the decimal as a percent. Anytime you're looking at different um, uh, amounts of something, you want to compare them to each other, people tend to go to a percent because it now suddenly equals the playing field. So we're, um, let me give you an example. Um, one time I had a team of four students and a team of five students, and they were playing a game against each other. They're added together points were um, were how they would be scored. And you might say, well, gosh, Ms. Sanchez, the team of five is going to do better than the team of four. They have one extra person to earn points. And they do, right? 
when that became the case, what I would do is I'd find the percent correct because now I'm making a calculation of if they had 100 people on their team um, ha and average that all their points amongst them for the four-person team and for the five-person team, you are going to kind of even out what they're what they would have in a similar fashion. So you'll see people use percents when they're trying to even the playing field. So we're trying to compare two different things that we're not really sure how they compare. A fraction, a decimal, and we don't know if they played the same amount of games or different amount of games. Sort of that common denominator sort of thing. We need to know. So we'll put them as percents. So I have 11 twentieths for, let me underline the question, which team was more successful? What information do we have? The Phoenix Suns were 11 out of 20 games won, and the Miami Heat won uh, 524 thousandths of their games. Let's look at that 11 twentieths first. Remember earlier I said, you know, let's look at that denominator. Can I make that into 100 fairly easily? Can I multiply that by something and hit 100 right on? And in this case, yes, I can. I can do that because 20 times 5 is going to give me, let me do a different color. Uh, 20 times 5 gives me 100. And remember, to keep it equivalent, I must do the same to the numerator. So 11 times 5 is 55. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value to write the equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. A percent is a ratio comparing a number to 100. Write the ratio as a percent. They want 55% because 55 out of 100 is the same as 55% right? So we just wanted to get that denominator to 100 because we know out of 100 means percent. So percent of games won by the Phoenix Suns was 55%. Now let's talk about this number. Just like I uh, mentioned in the previous uh, slide, this is 0 0.524. We want it as a percent out of 100. So we would be this has already been changed out of percent. I want it back into percent. So I'm going to multiply by 100. Okay, that's what they just said here is to write a percent as a decimal. We divided by 100 to move the decimal over, right? And so now they say, well, do the opposite. Write a decimal as a percent. So that means just multiply by 100. So I'm taking that 0 0.524. I'm moving, I'm multiplying it by 100, which simply means moving the decimal spot two spots over one two and i'm gonna get 52.4 that is um, moving the decimal point two places to the right and that is my percent 52.4 percent so the percent of games won by the miami heat is 52.4 percent at this point, I just need to compare who has the higher percent. Is 55% for the Phoenix Suns higher than 52.4% for the Miami Heat? Yes, it is. So the Phoenix Suns had a greater percent of their game, so they were more successful during the 2008-2009 season. All right, and so we can get a look with this example of, of what's happening, why I'm moving that decimal over two spots. So they said write seven, 0 0.7 as a fraction and a percent. Remember, this is 7 in the tenths place. 0 0.7 means 7 tenths because it ends in the tenths place. And so we could write it as a fraction of 7 tenths. Now to change that to a percent, remember I want this denominator to be 100. I can change 10 to 100 by multiplying by 10. And um, I would multiply the numerator and denominator by 10 to make sure that I kept it equivalent. And that's going to give me 70 one hundredths. That's what I was after. And write the ratio of 70 to 100 as a percent. We're comfortable, I think, now with 70 out of 100, meaning 70%, and 70%, meaning 70 out of 100. They mean the same thing, okay? So that we can interchange. So we just needed a, a denominator of 100. Um, you could use that trick with the decimals um, on this, 0 0.7. Remember, we were taking a decimal and changing it to percent by moving the decimal 
two spots over. Well, 0 0.7 doesn't have two spots there right now, but that doesn't mean you can't create it. Give it a zero, and now you have two spots, and then call it percent, 70 percent. And that's probably the easiest way to change a decimal to a percent. And so to finish this off, 0 0.7 written as a fraction is 7 tenths, and 0 0.7 written as a percent is 70 percent because we needed to get that to become 170%. And so now we find ourselves at that place where I had mentioned, oh, you know, it's easy if you have a fraction that's easy to ch change a denominator to 100, right? What if it's not? What if it's not easy to get that uh, denominator to be perfectly landing on 100? What if it's not? And here's that situation now. Write 3 is as a decimal and as a percent. Okay, 340 is 40 times uh, another whole number is not going to land me right on 100. So I'll go back a skill to something I know, how to change a fraction to a decimal. Remember, a fraction is simply a number over a number. So I can just divide 3 divided by 40. 3 divided by 40. 3 divided by 40. And it's not gonna go, obviously, four doesn't go into three. We knew that was gonna happen, and we knew that because this is a proper fraction. If it's a proper fraction, it's gonna be zero point something. So let's go ahead and multiply through. 40 does not go into three. We know that. Give it a decimal. Give it a lifesaver. Four also does not go into 30, so we'll say so. We'll give another lifesaver. Four does go into 30 uh, seven times, because seven times four is 28, so 7 times 40 is 280, subtract, borrow, and I'm left with 20. I should have given myself more room, forgive the messiness going on here. Uh, throw a lifesaver down. 4 into 200 is going to go 5 times, and that's going to give me exactly 200. And so I end up getting 0 0.075. When I divide that to write a decimal as a percent, we multiply. So now we have the decimal of 0 0.075, right? We divided to get it. And now that we've divided to get it, we just use that skill of moving the decimal over twice to make it a percent. Multiply by 100. So 3 uh, out of 40, or 3 fortieths, is this equivalent of 0 0.075. We divided to find that. Now to change it to a percent, multiply by 100, you're going to move that decimal here, they did it here, two times over, and you're going to get 7.5 percent. Move the decimal two places to the right. We're not changing from decimal to, uh, per, um, from percent to decimal, we're changing from decimal to percent. So 3 is written as a decimal, 0 0.075, and 3 fortieths written as a percent is 7.5 percent. So all we're getting on this part is saying, okay, so if you have a fraction with a, de a denominator that can, equal, that can easily become 100, then do that. If you have a fraction that doesn't have a denominator that easily can land on 100, then go ahead and just divide the numerator by the denominator, find out what it is as a decimal, and once you have it as a decimal, move the decimal two spots to the right, call it the percent. So that's how we do that. I'll do one more with you. All right, let's look at this fraction. We have um, six-fifths, and I put this one down thinking this would require us to divide, but I, uh, but I recognize now that I can make five become 100 to make it a percent, because five times 20 was 100, so I could do the same to both the numerator and the denominator, and I would get 100 for my denominator, and six times 20 is 120. That is the same as 120%, right? But let's pretend I couldn't do that, just so that you get the practice of doing this the other way, the division way. So I want to point out to you, though, this is 6 divided by 5. It's an improper fraction. And I mentioned before, well, you know if it's a proper fraction, it's going to be 0 point something. Well, you know if it's an improper fraction, you're going to have a whole number in front of it. It's going to be at least 1 point or something, you know, 1 point something or two point something, depends on how big this is compared to that. So we're doing six divided by five, six 
divided by five. And six will go into five once. And that gives me one. Remainder, I'm gonna go ahead and put decimal, lifesaver to save it, drowning. Five goes into 10 two times. It wasn't much division, it wasn't too bad. This is 1.2 as a decimal, but remember we want that as a percent. And what we learned is to make it a percent, I just multiply by 100 to move my decimal over two times. Well, there's one time and I need to create the second time so that it can go that second time. And that is going to be 120%. So I end up getting the same answer here because it's the same value. But this is the two ways that you can do it. If you can make that into 100, easily do it. And make sure you do the same to the numerator. You're good. If you cannot, then just take the top, divide it by the bottom, and you will get the answer as a decimal, and then move that decimal twice over to make it a percent. Hopefully that is, uh, that is clear enough for you. Let me know if you need extra help.